Alright guys, welcome back to F1 News. More drama between Christian Horner and Lewis Hamilton with the Red Bull team boss suggesting that Hamilton has selective memory when it comes to dominance in recent seasons. Hamilton recently suggested Red Bull's car is so good they will win not just for the rest of this year but still for the next two years as well. Horner has downplayed such suggestions and said it's obscene at the amount of winning Hamilton used to do and thinks it's about time they got their eight years of winning in a row. Very much on Twitter, your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. So first of all, before we get into the Horner stuff, there was a big update on the General Motors side yesterday. We know full well that Andretti General Motors, that partnership, has been suggested as the 11th team in Formula 1. It's been approved by the FIA. The FIA say, yep, sure, they tick all the boxes. Does it work from a business perspective, though? Does Formula 1 management agree? Do the teams agree? Well, the answer is basically no. And to get this over the line, it's going to be more of a challenge, I think, than even Michael Andretti himself expected initially. Now, there was a rumour going around that Formula 1 management was actually pretty keen to get General Motors involved, but they don't like Andretti for whatever reason. And they were pretty keen, this was a rumour, not, you know, confirmed or anything, but they were pretty keen to say, look, GM, if you partner with some other brands, we'll take you, but we don't like Andretti. And General Motors have now said that we don't care what you think. Like, we're either going to do this with Andretti or we're not going to do it at all. So the Las Vegas Grand Prix could be a good time to make this happen. It's frustrating from a fan point of view just because Haas are nowhere really and going backwards. Their upgrades don't even work. And they are, you know, the American team and all this. An actual proper American team with racing heritage just makes so much sense. But Haas refused to sell Alpha Tauri are making progress and they have this big sponsorship partnership with Hugo Boss, Adidas, whatever it's going to be next season for the naming rights. The only way that Andretti are coming in, it seems right now, is if they're accepted as the 11th team. They've been approved, but they've not been yet accepted because of the Concord Agreement and the money involved and all this political drama. So I'm sure more updates on this aren't all that far away. Now let's talk about Christian Orla then, because here he is on Bloomberg. I think this is called Bloomberg Surveillance. They did an interesting interview with him. I don't think it was too bad, all things considered, given what the mainstream media usually does when they interview Formula 1 people. Seemed relatively interested to actually understand what Formula 1 is and how it operates and, you know, some of the details about the track conditions and why the car is so good, this type of stuff. But Orla's been giving lots of interviews over the last few days. Of course, he's relishing in the spotlight that this season has provided them. And he talked quite a lot recently about the Daniel Ricciardo situation, even saying that back in 2018, when Ricciardo, of course, called it a day and went to Renault, basically, he was offered the same pay as Max. He was only offered like, well, they basically allowed him to get offered a one-year deal due to concerns about Honda. And then, of course, he goes to Renault, the engine that arguably let him down over the last couple of seasons. And look, he didn't have a terrible time there, to be honest, but leaving Red Bull was a mistake. And even apparently Horner said that Ricardo admitted that to him and phoned him up during the pandemic and said, he called me and you're absolutely right. And I apologize about everything that happened. We always had a good relation. He was badly advised at the time and basically begging you know, Horner, please take me back. And eventually now he's kind of back in the Red Bull family and he might be not far away from being back in that seat. Just because he also mentioned this Horner about the Checo Perez thing and says, um, as he has done for some time, Checo has an agreement with us for next year and that is our intention. And we remember that this is the same thing Horner said when they got rid of Gasly, when they got rid of Albon, that, oh yes, it's our intention to keep them. But he said, look, it's our intention for him to be in the car in 2024. It doesn't matter if you've finishes second or not, but um, he then clarified on the significance of using the word intention, which is what we talked about the other day. I'm absolutely confident and clear that Checker will be our driver next year. Now, if he was injured or something like that, there are circumstances beyond our control, which is a strange thing to say, though. Know? He could have just left this sentence off, but um, I'm not exactly sure why Horner felt the need to say, well, if there was some sort of accident, which, um, you know, ruled Perez out, then of course we would be replacing him. And it's like, I don't know why he needed to say that. I don't know if, um, yeah, Horner's cooking up some sort of unfortunate accident that, you know, such as what happened to Ricardo, the broken hand or whatever, that would uh, leave Perez in a position to not be in that position. I don't know. But um, a strange statement, I thought, to make nonetheless. And of course, Horner then continued to talk about various other things, such as what they had to do to get Newey to stay around at Red Bull and not go to Ferrari. The fact that they'd offered him a rather nice lifestyle Ferrari in Monaco and they had to clarify, oh, look, we'll let you build this 
this road cart. We'll let you build this submarine. Do whatever you want, Adrian. Just uh, please don't leave and go to Ferrari or to Mercedes or work with any other drivers. Now, the last couple of weeks, Horner's also been stepping up his game with calling out Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton. He actually mentioned after the P2 in Mexico that Hamilton had a stroke of luck to get into that position, which, um, which is true to some extent, just because if there was no red flag after the Magnussen crash, then Hamilton would unlikely have caught Leclerc because Leclerc was ahead and Hamilton had all the tyres. So it was rather unlikely Hamilton would have got P2 if there had been no red flag. But after the red flag, you know, the performance he put on on the mediums was definitely not lucky. And um, yeah, as Horner says, it gave them a strategy advantage and stuff like this, which might be true, but it's like when Horner's calling out um, a P2 performance for a stroke of luck, people said, all right, here we go. You know, we're officially back. Mercedes versus Red Bull is back on. Now, after the result in Brazil, it feels like that is less the case. I guess we'll see to some extent in Las Vegas whether this could be true. But after Brazil, Hamilton was not happy. Neither were the entire Mercedes team. And I'm sure some of this was emotion, but some of this is probably valid where he says that ultimately all I can do is remain optimistic. The Red Bull, I think, is so far away, so dominant, that they're probably going to be very clear for the next couple of seasons. So, you know, this seems sensible enough. But of course, Horner is going to say, oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about guys we're going to be challenged next year next year is going to be a real difficulty and this is what Horner loves to say and let's be honest he said the same thing last year you guys remember they finished the season in a pretty dominant fashion last year Red Bull and he said oh well you know 2023 that's the year Mercedes are going to be back Ferrari are going to be back and we're going to have a real challenge on our hands turns out it's been one of the most if not the most in some respects dominant season in F1 history so just because Horner says that oh yeah well next year that's going to be a nice competitive season for the fans doesn't necessarily necessarily mean that it is. So Horner initially responded to the idea of, all right, how dominant could they be? Saying it's always difficult to read too much into these things. There's lots of world championships that are one of the wind tunnel numbers at this time of year. I think that we've got a great car. We've got a great basis. We need to keep evolving it. But of course, the returns are going to diminish because you're hitting the top of the curve. Now, this is theoretically true. But as we said the other day, apparently Adrian Newey is cooking up some sort of radical new design which will effectively revolutionise the way the aerodynamics and the floor operate, especially on the RB20 compared to the RB19. So there seems to be a belief internally at Red Bull that actually their returns are not necessarily diminishing at the top of the curve and they are creating an entirely new curve that they can then try and hit the top of maybe in 2025. So Horner says, oh, you know, it will concertina, everyone will come closer together, it will come closer, that will stretch us more for sure, but the team are very motivated, nobody's let off since we won the championship, everyone is still fully on it and just operationally, strategically, Red Bull are just so tough to beat. They're basically number one in all departments and it's quite difficult to beat a team when they've got all that going on. But he says, oh no, next year's definitely going to be closer. Now, he of course comments on Hamilton saying this, because whenever Hamilton says something about a car being dominant, Horner always has an easy comeback to say, well, you know, I sat here for eight years, didn't really win anything apart from a few races here or there, while Hamilton was, you know, racking up the championships. So, of course, Hamilton has suggested at the start of the season that there's never been a car as good as the Red Bull, and even more recently says, well, they're so good, they're going to be very clear for the next couple of seasons at least. Horner says, I feel like he's got a selective memory. Some of the winning that they did in that period was just obscene. We've had a good run for a couple of years, but the one guy that shouldn't be saying that, I would think, is Lewis. So quite the statement from Horner. I mean, look, it's a classic statement that he might make. And it's quite an easy one to go for. Now, look, does Hamilton actually have selective memory on this stuff? I'm not so convinced personally. Is Hamilton somewhat concerned that, you know, he's only realistically got a few years left in his career? And is there going to be a chance to win another championship or even just another race the way that Red Bull are going? I mean, Hamilton really hasn't had any chances. The last couple of seasons, there's been a couple of races, like maybe Zandvoort 2022, like, even, to be fair, Austin 2022 with the bad pit stop of Verstappen. And then I guess maybe Singapore this year was a chance if Russell wasn't in the way or Hamilton qualified better, whatever. But, um, and even you see it with Norris, right? Norris has driven some great races, but Max's car doesn't break. Max doesn't really make any mistakes. So there aren't many chances to win. And Hamilton, I'm sure, is understandably concerned about that. Now, is he selectively forgetting about the years of his own dominance? I wouldn't say so. And to be fair, even during that period, like, you've got to remember, and of course, as people tend to do in the 
applies to Horner's comment. People are bringing up all sorts of articles in the past on what Christian Horner used to say back in 2015 when Horner said that basically Red Bull were going to leave if Mercedes' dominance wasn't curbed because they were so strong. And, you know, Horner is a master of this political game and he's done it for years. Even this is another article when in the best interest of the sport it would be to act on Mercedes' domination. Now, of course, if anyone in Mercedes was to suggest that today, then Horner would crucify them despite doing the same thing not all that long ago. And to be fair, even during Hamilton's period of dominance, even 2015, also 2020, Hamilton said, look, it's, um, you know, sympathizing to some degree with the fans. And he's, his point that he made a couple of months ago, that there should be some sort of start state when the teams can start developing the new cars, which apparently will be the case going into 2026. That was a rumor a while ago. He's proposed that for some time and said that it's kind of unfair that Mercedes can win one year, have a great car, and then start their development on next year's car earlier than other teams can. And Hamilton said, even while he was dominating, that there needs to be a way to resolve this to ensure that teams can't dominate from year to year. And now he's saying it when Red Bull are dominating, then people are like, oh, Hamilton's such a hypocrite. But um, I think in fairness, he did make these points known. Now, would he have made these points known as, you know, let's say vociferously when he was dominating? No, because, you know, why would you want to do that? It's only natural. But I think there is some feeling from Hamilton and also from the fans about just, you know, selective memory is one way to look at it. But I also think people look at the eight years of Mercedes domination when they won on the constructors and they think, oh yeah, Mercedes were just untouchable for that entire period. But it's not necessarily the case. I mean, 2014, 2015, 2016, they had the best car hands down. But at least in two of those seasons, 2014, 2016, there was a very competitive title fight between the two Mercedes drivers, Hamilton and Rosberg. So, you know, okay, 2015 less so, but 2014, 16 was still entertaining seasons because they were kind of going down to the wire. 2017-2018, the Mercedes in 2017 was marginally stronger. You can even argue that on average in 2018, the Ferrari was marginally stronger. They were pushed in those two seasons. The 2017 W08 was far from a dominant car, I would say, in Formula 1. Sure, they won the championship. And in 2018, a lot of it was, you know, Hamilton just driving it probably the best that he ever has in order to win that championship and the superior Mercedes development over the course of the season. But it wasn't, you know, these weren't blowout championships by any means. 2019 was slightly more so. 2020 was pure dominance. And then 2021 was, of course, you know, the season where the Red Bull and the Mercedes were effectively very equal over the course of the entire season. So you look at the eight years of Mercedes dominance and sure, they and Hamilton did a lot of winning as Horner correctly recognizes during that period. But there were only like maybe three years of those eight where the seasons were, you know, foregone conclusions or were particularly dominant. The Red Bull performance we have seen this year is completely on a different level in some respects akin to maybe 2020 but even potentially more so because operationally and it was 2020 was a weird season anyway with the pandemic and all this stuff that went on and the first half of 2022 was entertaining Red Bull versus Ferrari it looked to be a competitive season that relatively quickly fell apart for multiple reasons and this year has been so dominant and there's been no challenge for Verstappen within the Red Bull situation that you can understand why fans and why Hamilton is saying you know this this isn't good for the state of the sport and to be fair you see that in the numbers on let's say, you know, viewership for the weekends and stuff like that as well, when it's declined quite significantly and in social media engagement, stuff like this, the numbers are down considerably since the start of last season, shall we say. And that's why a lot of the fan base are saying that, you know, there should be pegged back or something's got to change, whether there should be some sort of like WEC balance of performance style balancing. I don't want to see that. I don't think any of the teams really want to see that. But, um, and well, Wolf just says, look, we should do a better job at Mercedes as they need to. It's not Red Bull's fault that this is happening. They're setting up their team and structure in the best possible way. But when the status quo gets criticized by, you know, anyone really, Horner's going to shut them down. And of course, he has a pretty easy comeback to Hamilton, given his uh, history over the last couple of years of Formula 1. So tweet your thoughts in the comments below. Do you fall on Hamilton's side? Do you fall on Horner's side? I think either way, there's kind of both valid arguments being made. And Max also did comment as well on the, let's just say, the Las Vegas Grand Prix, the show. And uh, he made the comment that it's more about the show than the racing itself. And we'll see this weekend whether that proves to be true. I would uh, more than likely be on board with Verstappen's assessment of the situation. There was also a quick comment just 
just before we close out here from Pierre Gasly, he actually mentioned again recently the uh, the Red Bull decision to drop him a couple of years back and basically saying that he reckons that was you know, a poor decision, an unfair decision at the time. At the time, given the circumstances, definitely understandable, but of course then he goes on to win the race for Alfa Tauri and is a far better driver, you know, better driver today than he was then. Same with Albon, for example. So this is something towards what happens with Red Bull, right? They put good drivers in, but they aren't necessarily good drivers yet. And, um, and then, well, they don't do so well. They get kicked out, maybe unfairly so. So maybe Gasly's trying to say, look, you know, I could do a good job in that Red Bull sister seat if you gave me the chance again, Mr. Helmer Marco. And I'm sure Albon might feel similarly because at the end of the day, if you're a driver that is worth their salt and you want to actually try and be a world champion, you're not really going to get there by driving an Alpine or a Williams, at least at the moment in, in Formula 1 history, as much as uh, Alpine man Esteban Ocon says that McLaren have proved by their development that it is possible to escape the midfield. But McLaren are McLaren and Alpine are Alpine. So why not us, asks the Frenchman. I can think of a fair few reasons why, but very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.